Welcome to The Tactical Sub. Today, we will be looking at the top 20 most relevant trades for 2025. At number 20, we have Ivan Soldo. Ivan Soldo is set to go to the Saints after being unhappy with his role at Port. He felt caught behind Jordan Sweet, so now he is moving to St Kilda, where he will instead be behind Rowan Marshall. I believe that the Saints actually may play the two rucks, as they have tried before with Campbell and Hayes. This would see a big decrease in Marshall's fantasy output unless he rests forward and kicks plenty of goals like he is capable of. Number 19. This is by no means a done trade, but there has been significant talk about Finn Maganis, aka the Ice Pole, being traded this offseason. I think Essendon and Sydney are two possible contenders, but the Hawks are still happy with him and the depth he offers. I doubt anyone would want to be leaving the Hawks when they are so exciting too. Luke Parker has been announced to head to North Melbourne as an experienced mid, replacing Shields who has retired. He would be higher up on the list, but unfortunately he is probably too far past his prime to consider him in fantasy. At 17, we have another confirmed trade, which is Harry Perryman, who will be leaving the Giants to go to Collingwood. Journalist Mitch Cleary from Channel 7 has told that this move was made with the potential for more midfield time, which could be very exciting and perhaps shows that the Magpies are in need of some stronger mids. One of many Richmond players who will be departing from the club is Shay Bolton. Bolton has requested a trade back home to Western Australia. He looks set to join Freo, which probably won't earn him much midfield time with some of the names there, but we will see. Stocks are low on fantasy forwards, so any change is exciting. Number 15. Devon Robertson is someone who I actually think could be quite good in 2025. He only got to play two games this year and will come in around basement price. He hasn't really shown great scoring before, with high 60s being his ceiling so far. However, with a move to West Coast and some opportunity there, he could have a breakout year. And he also won't be stuck being the likes of Neil, Dunkley and McLuggage any longer. Jack Lucosius is looking for a trade back to South Australia, and Port seems to be his likely destination. It could be very interesting where he plays in the side, as he offers a lot of versatility. It's most likely he plays the role of a tall forward, but Hardwick did toy with him being a halfback for a few weeks this year. It may seem very unlikely for him to play this role at Port, but later on, you may see why this position could become possible. One to look out for, given he will be a forward. At 13, I have Will Brody on the list, although he is still contracted. Fox Footy has suggested a few times that he may depart Fremantle in search of more opportunity, and if he did so, it could be hugely fantasy relevant. He is capable of averaging near 100 in scores with huge points per minute. He ticks off these factors while coming in very low priced, I would imagine somewhere in the mid 600s. It would seem odd for Brody to stay at the Dockers if he wanted more time in the midfield and even the team, given Sarong, Brayshaw, Young and Sharp, all well ahead of him in the pecking order. Add him to the watch list, I reckon. Going over to a few more interesting Tigers players, we first have Liam Baker. He has been a good option in the past and even still a pod lat season, but his scoring has been going down. Now, Baker is set for a move to Western Australia, just like Bolton. He likely won't be joining his teammate though, as West Coast seem to be the team he will go to. This could be great for fantasy, as they do not have a strongly established midfield or backline, and if Baker goes there, he should have a great role, wherever that may be on the field. Daniel Rioli will be also be jumping ship from Richmond to head to Gold Coast, where he will rejoin coach Damian Hardwick. We have already seen Gold Coast's game plan of chip marking with Sam Flanders' success, and Rioli could take advantage of this. Towards the end of the season, he had some huge scores, including a 135, and he might not be a bad option. I'm sure with all of the people leaving Richmond that we will also have some exciting younger players to consider, although I'm not sure who they will be just yet. All right, well, that is 10 players down and the 10 most relevant still to go, but I'll just pause for one second and ask you all to subscribe. My numbers are quite low for the amount of views I get, so hovering over that icon in the bottom right and pressing subscribe just really helps me out. Plus, you won't miss any of the AFL 
and AFLW content that I am putting out. Thanks guys, I appreciate it a lot. Now, to the top 10. Two of the forwards who a lot of people picked up late in the 2024 season were James Peatling and Matt Kennedy. Now both are likely to be at different clubs next year. With a forward line low on good scorers, these two could make their way inside the top six if they can land a solid role. Peatling has many clubs chasing after him, while Kennedy's destination remains unknown. A very surprising trade is John Noble, who has requested to leave Collingwood for the Gold Coast. Noble has been a great underrated scorer in the past when he's in the team, and I don't mind him as a pot option. His scores were very inconsistent last year, as he averaged 70, but he also showed a ceiling of 120, so he can definitely improve next season. At six and seven, we have Tom Barris and Josh Battle, who are both confirmed to be heading to Hawthorne. This is a huge move, not just for the game of fantasy, but for the footy world as a whole. The Hawks were brilliant this year, and with their biggest weakness in key defenders being patched with this trade, they could be unstoppable. I don't really think either of these two will be options that we consider. However, their presence changes many things. In the past, for instance, James Sicily has been one of the highest scoring defenders in the game, but he was forced to be more accountable this year, which lowered his average significantly. Along with Josh Weddle, I think Sicily will offer huge value in 2025. Now I have a handful of players from the Bulldogs who I want to discuss. First up is the obvious Bailey Smith who has fallen out of favour at the Bulldogs in light of multiple scandals. He was a big option in the preseason last year, and he will be even cheaper this year. In fact, he could offer like 40 points of upside with the additional discount he will get for missing the 2024 season. Another great thing about him is that he should be listed as a forward, so I could almost go as far as saying everyone should be starting him next year. He initially looked like he could go to Hawthorne, but now it is highly likely he will end up at the Cattery down in Geelong. Another bulldog is Jack McRae, who has been quite disappointing in the fantasy scene for a few years now. We all know that he can be a prolific scorer, which he has shown in many past seasons. So if he could get back even close to this, then we must consider him. At the dogs, Bevo was throwing him in different positions each week, and there was just no consistency. After requesting a trade, McRae looks most likely to go to St Kilda now. Sticking with Dogs players who had down years in 2024, we have Caleb Daniel. Beveridge was also messing around with Daniel's role in the team, even omitting the All-Australian defender. According to the AFL's Cal Toomey, Daniel could be heading to the Kangaroos, which could allow him to regain some of his scoring prowess. He averaged high 80s in the three seasons prior, before just having the 50 average in 2024. There's basically 40 points of upside right there already. Just like Richmond, these Bulldogs will leave a big hole in the side, and who fills that yet I do not know. It could be like an Ed Richards, who had some great scores towards the end of the year, or it could be a younger player who is finally given a good role. But that remains to be seen. At number two, we have another player who has been involved in some scandals, which is Clayton Oliver. Clayton Oliver was very interesting last season. He went from the best player in the game in terms of AFL fantasy to one who just couldn't perform. Melbourne are quite eager to trade him, and I don't think he's complaining. Oliver has already met with multiple other clubs, but the most likely destination looks to be Geelong. If he can lock down a spot in the side and find himself a solid role, there will be some serious value there. And finally, the most relevant trade in my opinion is Dan Houston. Dan Houston is a very fantasy relevant player and many coaches owned him at points last year. He has requested a trade to Victoria and I believe Carlton are the front runners to acquire him. North Melbourne and Collingwood are also potential destinations for Houston. This could not just impact his scoring either. If he goes to Carlton, it could impact Newman's scoring and cause a role change there. Back at Port, it would also free up a position on the halfback. This could be great for like a Jays Burgoyne or someone along those lines who had a bit of a breakout last year and could take it to another level. Anyway, those were the top 20 trades for the 2025 season. In the comments below, let me know who you are most excited for in 2025. 
But yeah, please subscribe. It makes me happy. See you in the next one.